Okay, well, I'll speak as loud as I possibly can. Uh, just to start off, I'm not an expert in this field, but I was born in 1951 in inner-city Liverpool, and my community had children that were going short of food and they had malnutrition in, in my little community. So I've seen it first uh, hand how damaging that is to young children. Because young children have to go to school, often not being fed properly, can't concentrate, and their life's chances are ruined because they're not able to get the nutritious meal that they need and require. Well, I, I think that some of the things that have happened, I think it's difficult to talk about malnutrition and then talk about the third world, because I've, I've just tried to concentrate on, on the UK, because I think what's happened is there's been a number of things changed since I was in school. For example, when I went to school, children got school meals. And when they got school meals, it was a balanced meal. It wasn't junk food. It was, it was intended to be a healthy meal for children to go to school on and to, and, and to eat. What we saw was that diminish over the years so that children stopped eating a healthier diet and they were helping themselves to burgers, chips, or whatever kids like to eat. And I think we've got to understand that why do people like sugar? Why do you like fats? Well, they like it because they're programmed to it. As a human being, you are programmed to like those sorts of things. Because in, in, in past lives, you didn't actually have to worry about some of those things. You never got, you never got over consumption. You never had the opportunity. You ran, if you exercise, you're chasing food, but you actually need some of those things to actually achieve what you need to achieve in life. But that's changed, and we need to change a way that we look at how we eat food and the sorts of diets. Now, TV advertisements being talked about here, and I think that we've got a long way to go on that. I think. We've got, we've got to certainly start to control the sorts of flow of information that we see. And I think we've got to take stronger action against the food manufacturers who often put some of the sugars and salt into the product because they know the consumers like it and they actually are uh, doing it deliberately, even though they know that's not the public health. So I think greater control and regulation of our food is crucially important to the I also think that we need to consider some of the other implications of why. I mean, I, I, obesity in this country is caused by the lack of access in some, in some of the different respects. Many of our community have got access to fresh vegetables. If they haven't got a car and live on a council estate that's miles away from a car, then it's unlikely that we'll get those sorts of fresh vegetables that they need. Often children now don't even know where vegetables come from. So when I was a leader of the council, we used to talk to children, we used to take them to an allotment sites, which they very much enjoyed. But they often didn't know that's how food was actually generated. They thought they just went to a supermarket the shop and they got it. So I think there's an educational job to be done. I would like to see, I think, I a strategy. I'd like to see people concentrate on children. I'd like to see us change attitudes to children. For example, one of the things when I was at school, the kids had to do was put the children Science. It was about actually how to prepare good quality food. Now, you don't, a lot of the things that don't happen in schools now, there's a lot of action that we could take in schools to actually make kids better prepared for the world that we face. And obesity, quite frankly, is one of those areas that we've got less active. Children are doing lots, a lot less activity, and I've got three grandchildren, and I know that they would rather play on their own pads than they would do go and play football. But I think we've got to do a lot more kids engage in sports and activities to actually get them exercise because quite frankly to become abuse you need it's about how much you're putting into your system and it's about how much you're generating by exercise out and there's going to be a balance in but I think there's an awful long way to go with the way that we actually bring up children in the UK. Now when I went to Brazil and I'm, I'm chairman of the Brazilian group I was actually quite impressed that despite all the problems that Brazil had they were doing some interesting stuff. They had, for example, free school meals for kids. They also had restaurants in the poorest community. When I say restaurants, there were restaurants that were set up in, in the poorest communities and they offered high quality food for the local community. So the community could access that food. I think there's quite a, 
We can learn a lot from Brazil and other countries about how we get back to getting our people, especially our children, to have a healthy and a healthy life and how, how they live their healthy life. Well, unless we actually go back in some cases to some of the things that we did many years ago, we can't make this curious. Thank you very much.